when it gets nasty and personal, you are not in the realm. And I pray for you. So I do that at night now. I pray for the people who are mean to me. Could you imagine living that kind of life where you get excited to find something that will hurt someone else? You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, a lifestyle podcast hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Tune in for a new episode every Tuesday to hear our honest conversations about topics like wellness, entrepreneurship, spirituality, and self-development with guests who are really smart, really inspirational, and really fucking funny. (laughs) It's real, it's raw, and it's unfiltered. Inspired by our transition from our 20s to our 30s, we realized it's so much more than that. Our mission is to provide you with the tools, guidance, and motivation to help you navigate any transitions in your life and propel your personal growth. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. (laughs) Cash me in the apartment. Cash me in the APT. Cannot believe Cash Me Outside has... 14 million followers. <laughs> America, dude, but, stop. <laughs> dude, literally stop. But that's what happens, man. Like, yo, kids, it's like, okay. So there's two tracks to success, quote unquote, to mm-hmm. getting money. The long, hard one where you have to figure out what you're good at, then do a 10,000 hours of that. Or fucking be a big old bitch to your mom, get on Maury, and that's it. I just be ridiculous. I just don't know. Sometimes I think with that type of uh, fast fame that it's not going to last. Therefore, you they have to be smart with their money in order to. I mean, she just got a nine hundred thousand dollar deal with some makeup brand, and no makeup brand that I. It's like copycat or something like that. (laughs) Of course it is, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like she'll make that money. Yep. I don't know. I mean, maybe she will. Maybe she'll like fucking start her own makeup line and and go for it. But you got to be smart with your money in the beginning instead of just, you know. Wow. Spending that paper. I mean, but like, yeah. I mean, to be honest, no one thought she would last this long, you know? And like now she has like <laughs> songs out and like a fucking makeup line and shit. Like this is like crazy. I mean, good for her, I guess, you know? I mean, does she? she's on tour. No, is she, is she coming to LA? Oh my God. Every caption <laughs> has the F time word. Ew. F time word. Hmm, that's a new one. F time? Yeah, F time. What does that mean? Yes, I'm saying F time word. Fuck. That means F fuck. Is fuck it F time? time word? Yeah, fuck time. It says fuck time? It's time for F time, which is fuck time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I got that F time. <laughs> this is not Krista speaking. I know. What did someone ask us the other day? Was like, what do you think about... Oh, they were like... What do you think about cussing on your podcast? I was like, what do you mean? I know. This is what I think about it. Listen up. Well, I, I, we did it from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So it was no surprise. Brands so, will do I cuss either... the same amount in person? No. Really? I cuss more on the pod? That's weird because I think that too a little bit, which is so weird. I don't think it's weird. It's so weird because I'm the same, but it's so weird. It depends on who you're with. Yes, I agree. But it, yeah, I was like thinking about that the other day. I was like, I actually don't think I cuss this much in person, which is so weird. It's the headphones. It's the headphones. Yo, got me feeling some type of way. Me. Yeah, 100. <laughs> headphones got me feeling like a big old badass, <laughs> just like I was feeling when we got nominated for the iHeart. <laughs> <laughs> Let's tell everybody. So, guys, we got nominated for the iHeartRadio. And you all were so yes. dope and voted like goddamn crazy women. And we are so grateful. And here's the thing. It was the coolest thing to get nominated. I think that like we walk away, we're like, ah, that's amazing. Honestly, it's hard to believe. We did get a little insider email that said, hey, you guys are like up there. You are up there like your community has been rocking it. We're like, obviously, like we... we. <laughs> so we were all... We're like, we're going to win. Honestly, I was telling everyone. Take over. Everyone I saw. I was like, oh, we're going to win. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like kind of manifesting it by saying it. <laughs> I told my dad that. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's Love like, him. stay humble. Love him. <laughs> and I just was like, we're going to win. Not only because we're the best, but because <laughs> our community. Dude. That was it. That was the only thing is like, 
the way that everyone, you guys responded and voted was so fucking sweet. And I just didn't, you know, I had my head in my ass, but like, I didn't see anyone else doing that. And I didn't see any of the other people really doing it. And, you know, we kind of took it seriously in that way where we're like, yo, we started this from our closet floors. Like we got nominated. This is huge for us. And this would be huge for us. Not part of a network doing everything on our own to, you know, win. So I'm like, you know, big dicking around being like, yo, we won. We won. (laughs) And I wasn't being an asshole. I'm just trying to... say it to myself so it happens. Exactly. Even though, you know, if we lost, I literally, it was, which we did lose, Mm -hmm. was totally fine. Mm -hmm. We got all dressed up. Got all dressed up. Got our makeup done. Got there early. Shout out to Beauty Wild and Brett Wood. Yes. They did it. She did a great job on our makeup. It was fun. It was like, oh, this is fun. And I got, uh, and I told you in the car, I was like, our angels are telling us to just have fun. Oh yeah. You said that. Let's do it. Let's have fun. Uh (laughs) So we're, so they're like, yeah, you should come early to like, for, you know, to be on the red carpet. We're literally there 15 minutes early. It's Hollywood. <laughs> it's, it, it's Hollywood. We're Hollywood in, arrives 15 minutes, an hour late. Yeah. So we're an hour and 15 we're minutes too Coast. early. I'm sorry. I know. I'm a big loser. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we're early as fuck. Everyone's like, who the hell are these women? Like the people that were by the red carpet line were like, you guys are really dressed up. I loved it. I, I'd like... Thank God we asked them what the attire was because I was about to be wearing like a red slip. <laughs> Honestly, my other options were we like... Looked, I thought we were looked appropriate. We looked I thought some people looked underdressed. 100%. Honest. Dude, there was like ripped <laughs> jeans and shit. Yeah. Like rocker chic to the extreme. Mm-hmm. We were... But it's also, I was saying this, it's so hard with podcasting because you hear our voices. You don't Completely. know what we look like. So we're at this award show and we don't know who the fuck anyone <laughs> I is. I know, we were like, huh? Literally, it's like the biggest names in podcasting and I don't know who the fuck <laughs> anyone is because all I know is their voice. <laughs> totally. So like, we're all just looking around, like no one knows anyone. It mm-hmm. was hilarious. Yeah, so we got our, uh, we got there, we got our wristbands and our ticket and we walked the red carpet and um, they did tell us beforehand that uh, awards some of the awards might be given out on the red carpet, depending on if they had enough time during the award show. So we walked the red carpet. We were then ushered off the red carpet. And then we look at each other like, okay, so we didn't receive an award on the the carpet. We're done. We're done. Cash me outside. Cash me outside. Um, And I got on my bad side, the whole fucking photo shoot. I I asked you. It was the worst. Oh, they were kind of directing. They were directing. It. It. I know. So they were directing me to be on a certain side of Lindsay, and that's my ogre side. So every picture <laughs> is fucking worthless. <laughs> I was like, oh sweet, my first time on the sweet. red carpet, and I look like a goon. So we go in, and then we look at our ticket and our um, wristband, and it says balcony balk, and we were like, okay, you know, like we don't know what the theater looks like. Maybe there's an aisle. That we can just run down to the stage and accept our award. <laughs> but then I started to think, I'm like, this is what celebrity, like, imagine that you're going to like the Golden Globes, whatever. Like, I'm sure that like where you sit kind sometimes has to do with if you're going to win or not. Like they probably get in there and they're like, cool. Awesome. No, one zilly. <laughs> that was the exact thing is that like, you're, so we're in the rafters, basically. And if you're winning, you were placed in a place where the camera can see your face, where you're close enough to the stage that yes. it's easy to walk. <laughs> so <laughs> facts are facts. You know, the, the odds are stacked against us. We are early as fuck. No award on the thing. No one knew who we were. And then we're in the balk. Mm-hmm. So we met these guys. I met these guys at a dinner and then we hung out with them. They have a podcast. Um, it's a music podcast. Jake and... Um, oh, God damn it. They were so damn sweet. They're from Nashville. They're, they're music producers. Yeah. They worked with Kelly Clarkson and Imagine Dragons, like all this shit. They're so, so fun. They're dads. Yeah, they were the best. Do you know their podcast? Actually? Yeah, I'm trying to find it. They were the best. And um, they were like literally at the table with... Jillian Michaels mm-hmm. and like all these celebrities and mm-hmm. we are in the rafters <laughs> where we belong, to it be was, honest. Yeah, we needed to be humbled, I suppose. But, I need to be humbled. Yeah, 100%. But, but, but I also need to be respected. I, I, yeah, I, I just feel like I, I was thrown off because they told us that we were really close 
with another podcast on winning. So I figured, well, we might, we're, we're probably going to we sit did at a, a table. Everyone were like, yo, guys, help. Yeah. So it was interesting. We lost to um, the Sleep With Me podcast, which is a um, a guy that reads, that that makes up bedtime stories that don't make sense. And it's actually one of the creepiest things I've ever listened to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not bitter. <laughs> Not bitter, just facts. <laughs> um, but uh, it was a fun night. We giggled like mm-hmm. the whole time just because, so you know, we were just like, oh, this is so funny and weird. And um, and it was really cool to see podcasting get recognized and yes. podcasting, you know, move into this space. And iHeart team, mm-hmm. you know, was really, really sweet and helpful. And we were just honored to be in the room with some, uh, you know, Dak Shepard, some of these amazing people um, and these amazing podcasts. You yeah. know, there are... I mean, Dr. Drew was there. Yeah, there's so many. Six, there are millions of podcasts, I feel like. And, and if, you, like, if you want to know, um, Mike Tyson is starting a podcast. And he, <laughs> he said, you know, I'm, I'm really <laughs> going to try to do it. I'm really excited. Like podcasting seems like something I'm really going to like. <laughs> <laughs> he was so sweet, so cute. So sweet. But like, he's like, yeah, this, this podcasting thing is... <laughs> I was like, do you have one? Like, what is yeah, happening? Is it coming? What's it about? <laughs> Tell me more. Oh, shit. And Mario Lopez hosted. Uh, there was also Charlemagne the God. I forget the other two that were yeah. co-hosts and stuff like that. Yeah. But we, you know, the, the our category goop, 10% Happier with Dan Harris, you know, Sleep With Me podcast, like a huge podcast. So yeah, we, we look like on, fools honored. among them. And we are honored to be a part of it. Truly. And, I heard is so great and the fact that they're being so forward about recognizing podcasting. So it was just a fun, fun night, but we got we got our asses humbled, which we deserve. <laughs> deserve. I'm a loser. <laughs> Been a loser since day one. <laughs> okay. I'm so excited for this week. Yo, Pia Arobio or Pia Baranchini, <clears throat> formerly. Yeah, Some people know her gets as... gets me like fucking wet. I know. <laughs> That's her, Baranchini. That like, is her mm. new... Last name. She just got. They haven't had the wedding yet, but um, but they did get married officially. Pia is someone who we admire, who makes us laugh, who inspires us because she is so fucking real mm. all the time on her social media, in person. She is the creator of LPA, the clothing brand, who lives under the Revolve. Um, house umbrella Mm -hmm. um, of brands and she's just the raddest. Yeah. She's one of those women that like, I mean, she is magnetic. Like when I am with her, I am like a fucking bee to honey. It is like, she is just, there's this like honesty and vulnerability and like joy and zest and like ability to feel all the feelings and honor her emotions and like lead with love that like is so special. And she has been able to build this brand, you know, with her talents, but also taking into consideration the love she has for her family and her husband and her mother and the loss of her father. And it is such a colorful weave, you know, like a colorful something, Mm -hmm. like just like a woven blanket of colors of beautiful things that have happened in her life um, that she has made into something amazing. And, you know, we just love to be around her and we love... Um, that you guys get in on her story to kind of see, you know, the behind the scenes and hear the behind the scenes of a crazy fucking year for this one. Yes. You know, she has been through so much with losing her dad, um, with things happening at the label, with, you know, her husband, with her husband's family, you know, his mother was mm-hmm. sick. Um, there's just a lot that's happened to her. So um, her being such an open book about it is so inspiring and beautiful and um, to bring this conversation to you, we feel very, very lucky that, you know, we're, I don't know any other podcasts. She's been on a few podcasts, but not really. So we feel very lucky and very exclusive that, you know, she was able to talk with us at her house yeah, in fucking say. Pasadena. Yes. Yeah, sh- thank you, Pia, for inviting us over. And her mom was such a little angel. She made us eggnog. <laughs> so angel. cute. And you just, you really feel at home with them. I mean, they're yes. cooking in the kitchen and I mean, this woman works so damn hard, not only on her business, but on herself. And she is so dedicated to her family. It warms my heart. So thank you for having us, Pia. And 
yeah, it does feel like we're we're kind of hanging in a house. So it, it's like a different vibe on this recording, which I think you guys will really love. The dog is there. Yes. We're, we're playing with the dog. So you will be a fly on the wall for this conversation at her home. Um, and we love you guys. Thank you so much as always for listening. It means so much to us that you share this podcast with your friends and your family. I mean, you tell us all the time and I, it's it's why we are growing. It's why we are successful. So thank you so much. And if you're called to and haven't already, um, we would love for you to review on iTunes. It really helps us out. Uh, su- subscribe. So every episode, Tuesdays and thir- Thursdays are in your little iTunes I, uh, podcast. I can't talk. Podcast box. <laughs> Ooh. 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 You can um, find uh, Pia at Pia, P-I-A-A-R-R-O-B-I-O on Instagram and then at LPA. Yes. All right. We'll see you on the other side. See you on the other side. Love ya. That's how I feel about being vegan. I've, I've always felt that. Yeah. If I'm like, oh, I'm, I don't eat meat. People are like, oh, I gotta. I love bacon. <laughs> so you can't stop me from eating bacon. I'm like, I literally don't give a fuck if you eat bacon. <laughs> yeah. People get very like. So, but we grew up like we evolved, um, or they'll yes. say like, like, "I only eat meat like three times a week." Yeah, and you're like, I, okay. <laughs> or they're like, um, <laughs> "How are your iron levels?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm good." <laughs> I'm like, no one's looking at me wondering about my iron levels. Bitch. <laughs> that is that. Well, because then, because now, so that comes down to just consciousness, right? So then, then you, as like a person who eats meat all the time, then I want to say like. I inherently I'm like, well, I'm like my response would be like, well, I'm O blood type and I need oh, me. No. And, <laughs> yeah. Because you because I was listening to this on an Oprah podcast. It's co- like conscious eating is like super real, right? So once you're mm-hmm. conscious of what animals go through, yeah. I'll never not eat meat, but you know, I buy meat from the mm-hmm. Air One or mm-hmm. I go to the butcher in Pasina mm-hmm. or you know what I mean? I like eat meat yes. that I know. So you're doing the- exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect example. I'm like, oh. Yeah, no, but mine's different. Mine's my different. cows were really happy. <laughs> yeah. And I drove up to Big Sur for my birthday and there were all these branches on the water mm. overlooking like the I know what fucking you're talking Pacific about. Ocean. Light. And I was like, those are the cows I want to eat. <laughs> I want to eat the cows with the ocean with the I know. Wow. I know. <laughs> Wait, did you, what birthday were you celebrating? 32. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's amazing. How does it feel? Uh, you're only 32 and you've done insane. so much. Oh, uh, God. For me. Uh, Carly wow. Kloss is 25. Oh, How does right. that make well, you feel? Oh my god! Who? So, Just kidding. I know. <laughs> Isn't that wild? I wild. Like, wow. Um, I go back and forth between feeling old and feeling young. I feel. Mm. I feel. I would God, you couldn't pay me to relive my twenties again. I know. Mm. And I'm happy. I'm like, oh, okay. If you would have told me when I was 16, this is where I'd be. When I was 32, I would have said, "There's no way." So I'm very thankful and happy in a positive way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I know. But I feel like I have so much. I can't wait till I'm in my 40s. Oh, I'm going to be like... That's what Lindsay was saying. Hot. Always. So That's what hot. Lindsay was saying. How? Yeah, I'm going to be hot. Because you know what's going to be so hot? <laughs> well, not know. only are we going to be like, you know, up in all the wellness stuff and beyond, but I think it's more so the confidence, the settling in, mm-hmm. like being so happy. Like I just see you with your fiance and I know you're going to have like beautiful kids. Like yeah, it's so just like kids. the happiness makes you Seven? more beautiful. No, so, I said so many. I'd uh, like to do. I mean, try, listen. Are you trying? No, we'll okay. try at the end of this summer. Okay. Yeah. Because we had to. Well, so we had to cancel our wedding like super yeah, last minute. Well, his mom mm. got so sick and they didn't know what it was and then realized she has like a massive tumor in her stomach. Oh. And. Went to see a doctor who said, there's really nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. Like, your best bet is to take her home and keep her comfortable and do all her favorite things. And basically, like, because the tumor is so big, it's resting on her leg. And her leg, like, expanded into, like, four times the size. And so they were, like, trying to... It's whatever. It was, like, we're trying to figure it out, trying to figure it out. And then... They were like, oh, she's really sick. 
And then they took her home and then she had something. It's also horrible because they say things in Italian that are words that don't translate. And I'm so, I mean, my dad was sick for so long. So I know about so many, ter- I just, yeah. and so I'm like, I don't know what that is. Because she had a bad reaction to something and like fainted. Mm. And so. And this, she's in Italy. So you're hearing about this when you're here? Yeah. And it was a big, it was like three weeks before our wedding. So. Um, which you were going to have at your house. Which you were going to have here, yeah. Yeah, and it was... I don't want to talk about it, but it was the day after the sweatshirt thing mm-hmm. happened. And I was alone in a hotel room, like hysterical, and couldn't even leave the hotel room because I went to New York to have the event and and then everything mm-hmm. happened. And so I was in a state of shock and had two friends that had to like sleep in the hotel room with me that night. My girlfriend, thank God, was in New York and... um. I I was like in such a state of shock and panic and anxiety and scared and couldn't even look at my phone and and then like all the I had like a PR team in the room with me and I was just and then he called me and was like we have like my mom is very sick and we got to go. And I was like our wedding is in 3 weeks so I know and then I kind of was like should we cancel the wedding? just throwing it out there, not wanting to do that. And he was like, I think we should. And then, yeah, it just hit me like, fuck, like we need to cancel our wedding. Like there will be, we're married. We love each other. He gave up a lot to move here to be with me. We're denying him seeing his mother and then like fake celebrating here when that's all he's thinking about. So he also doesn't have a fucking green card. So we begged the government for two days to give us permission to go. So we had like doctor's notes that I had to get legally. This happened four times in two days. Like a doctor would write a note in Italian. I have to get it legally translated, legally notarized, go back there, tell them, show like, here's my wedding invitation. Here's the email saying that we canceled the wedding. Here's our plane tickets for next, or it was like two days from then. And the guy was like, none of that is like means anything to me. And so we sat there for, we would sit there for just hours. Oh my God. They like deliberated whether or not they would let us go. So because he doesn't have a green card, he's not allowed to go in and out. He can only be here or what? Yeah. So we applied for everything and did all this stuff. It used to take like three months to get a green card and it's been six months. Mm. So seven months. So um, he can't leave. (laughs) So they gave him 30 days which was great. And then we got on a plane and went to Italy and we spent, I went for two weeks. He stayed for 30 and we just woke up every morning and went and sat in a hospital. And I, so in Italy, most countries, you share, obviously she shared a room. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we wake up, we have a coffee, Italian breakfast makes me so sick. So I would be like, just feel like I'm like, oh. yeah. um, <laughs> Because I'm like eating granita. He has granita. It's granitas, <laughs> which we'll argue about it for hours. That I'm like, that's fucking dessert. He, uh, yeah, and, uh, and he's like, no, you need the sugar and the cream and the bread. And I was like, bread. I pass out. And ice cream and <laughs> like, whipped cream. Out. And so it makes me feel so sick. And I, because I don't. Even... Yeah. And so then we get in the hotel room, and I love his mom, and she and I love each other so much. She does not. She speaks dialect. Mm. Like instead of saying yeah. Bella, she says Beda. Like she's. She's to die for. She's mm. a Scorpio and her name is Carmela and she's blonde and has blue eyes and she's a fucking powerhouse and mm. has like six kids. And I die for her and she just stares at me and goes, bed up, bed up, morning, kisses me and cries and cries. And then that was like emotional. Mm. And then she also didn't know she had cancer. Mm. They don't tell you. Doctors don't tell you what is going on because they don't want to freak you out where information in America it's like it's, it's, in America in America they almost over they overshare with you overshare in a way. and this is a country that operates on emotion and principle and they were like that doesn't serve her to know that you know so they're like we just need to do some more things and know that so that was hard for me because i know that she's sick and she doesn't and it morally what? felt wrong. Wow. What did he think about that? His dad and brother, his middle brother is obs- and the mom have a very 
intense connection. And they like the brother still lives at home. Even when he had a successful restaurant, he lived at home. Like he doesn't. So he's, they're panicking. Mm. And so they were like, we'll fix it. So they were just trying to find solutions being like, we'll tell her when. And so I'm sitting there like, I know what cancer is like. And I know the side effects of chemotherapy. And I've seen these things. And I know that like this woman needs to be mentally prepared to deal with this in a graceful manner. And I started to get very frustrated. And also I'm sitting in a room where I don't speak the language. So we would like get in the room. I'm like high on espresso and sugar from breakfast. And then I would sit there and try to be really present, but also be like, I'm listening to a language I don't understand for hours while there are two other women dying in the room with her with their families. And so, and I just want to talk to people. So I would like sit with the other people and talk to them. And there was one woman who was by herself. And she was so cute. And I would sit with her and like help her eat her lunch or help her eat her, her dinner and help her get in and out of bed. And I brought her flowers one day and the next day I came and she had died in the night and wasn't there. And that was insane. It was really hard. It was like nonstop and other other families. And, you know, the, this one woman in the room like almost died like four times. And the whole family's there and they're freaking out. And I'm like, and then we dragged her to another hospital. She didn't know why she was there. It was just like, so she didn't even know. And then I'd say goodbye to her. Like, I was like, I have to go knowing that I probably would never see her again. So I like hugged her. I remember being like, okay, mama, like it's time for me to go. She's like, is this it? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, okay, well, I'll see you at Christmas. And I was like, yeah, mom, I'll see you at Christmas. And she hugged me. She's like, you're going to be such a good mom. And Mm -hmm. I love you so much. And it was why and every, and I'm like, I'm telling her I love her so much. And everyone in the room is hysterically crying because they, they all know and I know that I'm never and she gave me like a really beautiful goodbye we had a lot of really good time while we were there like she kept would like look at me and be like you know there were times where we had nothing and Francesco would bring home bread because we couldn't afford meat and I would cook the bread like it was meat and I would cut it in she's like these little paw her hands are like little paws and Italians Aww. talk so much so there's just like little hand so I'd cut the bread in half and I would give half to me and Francesco and I'd split up the rest amongst the three boys and we would cheers with we get water from the spring and we would pretend it was fine and we had no money but we were happy and she's like mm-hmm. and you and David have that kind of love like money will go up and down but you guys love each and I'm like <laughs> and David's translating it to me and he's so handsome and so proud and feeling so much hearing that and meanwhile that was happening like the internet like I would open my phone and get like internet attacked and like trolled really hard. And it was the most. The polarity. Oh, mm. wow. And then I would cry, you know, like someone post, you know, this account that goes out, post yeah. something and I'm in a hospital room and I'm looking at it and I start crying and his family loves me. And then they're freaking out because they're like, take her home, take her home. And I'm like, no, I'm so sorry. This is not about me. Like none of this is about me. Like, and I just had to like swallow it and be like, okay, I really have to put a boundary up with the internet and how it affects my life Mm. because I'm watching people die all day long here. Like sweet women and their families who are just like dying and, you know, seeing a woman who has, I mean, Italians, right? There's like five kids and like 12 Mm -hmm. grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And seeing the things that they're saying to their families and how people are acting and what life is really about in your last moments. And then like Mm. to see people being fucking mean to each other on the internet about shit that actually really doesn't matter that much was a gift to me that it happened at the same time. Although it was exhausting. It was a gift. That's the thing is I'm thinking about this is like how intense this emotional journey has been for you. You Mm -hmm. know, since just, you know the past years, like with your father and with this and with everything with, with him, it's like, how are you able to, to do normal things in life? And like, you know, like with like yeah. being on social and shit, like how are you just like not able to like engage with the, the shit that doesn't matter anymore? What was really nice was so many people that hundreds of people said, such nice things to me after all this stuff happened. And like anyone who knows me, like it was yes. one of those where it's like, I have to learn to wake up in the middle of the night. Like 
from a bad stress stream and be like, I am so proud of who I am. And sure, like, do I need to like uh, tighten some ends at work and be more detail oriented? Because I also feel like I live such a small life because it's like, you know, I have my family life and then I go to work and I don't do that many social things just because I'm busy and tired and and then I like put things on the internet and I forget that like a yeah. hundred thousand people are seeing it. And so it's very, you know, it taught me a lot about really being, I have like a woman, like a spiritual advisor woman who's a family friend who I talked to and she's like, you need to like really think about every little thing you put on the internet because that is energy that goes out into the mm. world. So I really now have to... It's also like I can't just feel bad for myself or like harp on things. Like I, my life has to continue. And I am the sole financial supporter for a lot of people right now. So yeah, like did a, I had to do a fucking Evian post after like all this mm. shit's happening when like my mom is... Or my mother-in-law is sick in Italy. And I was like, yo, I got to like... I need to push this out a couple mm. of weeks. And they're like, well, the client... And I, and I was like, forget about it. And then I was like, well, my mom was like, you can't. Like, we have to pay the mortgage on this house. And I'm like, all right, well, what's the fucking compromise here? <laughs> like, Dude, literally. Yeah. That's I, the like, worst when like you're feeling some type of way and you have a brand thing. Ugh. I'm like, oh, I'm feeling and like... really new to me. Depressed yeah. and shit, but you, I'm posting my skincare routine. Yeah. Isn't it wild? It's the like, worst. And I'm like, people know me, right? They know that yeah. I'm in Italy right now. So I can't just be like, you almost have to create like a window. Like, hey, yeah, within yeah, yeah, this yeah. week window. My mood will when be... I, when we'll, I'm we'll feeling days, my super mood. surface. <laughs> totally. <laughs> bullshitting. It's been bullshitty. Yeah, what? it's what I Someone saw, was like, oh, that. you need that money. And I was like... Yeah, I do, bitch. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> I do. I do. I saw that and I think you you did that very, very good. well. Thank I'm you. like... I was like, yo. I literally saw that. I'm like, yo. I just never, like, I've never, I mean, we talk about this all the time. I've never, so here's also the thing. And um, Gwyneth Paltrow said this when I heard her speak the other day. She said so many things that was like, it was almost like I was meant to be there because um, mm-hmm. there were so many things that she said that I feel like were like a gift to me. Mm-hmm. She also gets fucking ripped. Oh my God. I think about that probably once a week. <laughs> and so someone asked her a question about it. And she said, if you have a blog or an Instagram account, you, and I always say, I use this exact term all the time. So it was, she said, if you don't follow journalistic decorum, which like I study journalism. So I'm like, this is not how this works. You can't just fucking write what you want and like not fact check or get timelines or ask for a quote from someone. So she's like, if you don't follow journalistic decorum, journalistic decorum if you don't have a, a brand within, that category. If you're just someone who decided one day to have an opinion about a lot of things, she said, you are not in the arena. You're not, I don't care what you say. And the cheapest, and she goes, and if it's for clickbait, it's even worse. And if you are using the anger that is trolls on the internet as like little shit bitch minions to like go destroy someone, that's the lowest form. Lowest form of social communication. So that, I was like, oh, listen, I'm all about calling some shit out and doing what's right. And if, and like, I will be the first person to be like, I fucked up. You called me out on it. Like, won't happen again. And thank you for making me more detail oriented and want to work harder. But when it gets nasty and personal, you are not in the realm. And I, and I pray for you. I, so I do that at night now. I pray for the people who are mean to me because can you imagine living that kind of life where you get excited yeah. to find something that will hurt someone else? I'm also like, what's coming back at you? I'm well, like that, nervous for you. I'm nervous Like you said you. before about the energy that you put out. that's really, really real. Like, what's coming back? Like I think the sweatshirt thing cosmically went bad because it was a negative thing on a sweatshirt. You know what I mean? Wow. Like if it was a positive thing, I, that would obviously that wouldn't have happened. But it was, even though That's I'm damn. such a posy, happy, happy person, I think that, and listen, that was like so out of my control, but um, in like, but I think that cosmically why that happened. Wow. As like the dust, I mean, just a lot has happened. Yeah. 
in the last year. And I just feel like as the dust settles and like, you know, everything is okay. Like it, mm-hmm. in the essence of... That's you know. also what Gwyneth Paltrow said. Someone asked her she the, what her biggest lesson, what you would mm. say to yourself when you were tw- in your early 20s. Yeah. And she said that everything will be okay. Yeah. Like bad hires, divorces, mm-hmm. everything. Like... In those moments where you're just like, oh my God, what am I going to do? My life is over. Like, your life is never over. And it's like always going to be fine. Have you found things to like, that you're like, yeah, I'm just going to not either like let that go or not do that anymore. We recently had a conversation. That's why I'm thinking about this. We're like going to the new year, like these are some like either non-negotiables or things maybe that I want to put more focus and love on. I think more so focusing like David and I were kind of talking about it too you know I just being my, like my best self and being aware and being like aware that like decisions that I make in a day or don't make because I'm busy and don't oversee a couple of things like I need to get very detail oriented and just be like a more of my better he David a rips my ass to shreds in this category because he is <laughs> like you do too much mm. and it is not normal i mean that is not that culture at no. all so he doesn't believe in multitasking mm. he thinks that is a weak form of work and so even just now we were loading in the groceries and i saw that the dryer had stopped and i was like i my, our dryer i know on one cycle does not dry my sheets all the fucking way so I had all the groceries in my hand and with my pinky <laughs> was turning. And he was like, you're going to drop all the wine that you got tonight for your fucking LPA holiday party that we're having at our house. Like, you're going to drop wine. Like, And he was like, don't. And I did it. And he was like, don't be proud of yourself for doing something that could have ended badly. I love that. Oh my- <laughs> but also guys don't multitask very well. Don't, I think do women not. do very well. No, we, I do too. But I do because I actually, we evolved raising yeah. children and doing... Having but I respect we have the... To. the, the I mean, it comes from a place of love where it's just yeah. like, you don't have to do everything at once. I have I'm a you friend permission. who's been staying with us for almost like three weeks now. She had like a, a bad situation happen and isn't comfortable staying in her apartment. And it's like a young girl who works at our office. And I was like, we have, I was like, why, what kind of person would I be if I wasn't like, please come, you're uncomfortable where you sleep. Like you come to our home. And so she has been here for three weeks and, I love having her here and I don't mind it at all. And I think it's really nice. And because it's also like, there's like an objective mm. view on my life, mm. which is make it, it was just really cute. Oh, I love that. And she sat down the other night and was like, what do you, we were like, she, Davide and I were eating dinner and she said, um, like, how do you manage so many things? I know. I think about that. Because she was like, I forgot my computer this morning and I had to drive back here because I was frazzled. And I was like, I don't know. Like, like <laughs> And David was like, you need to wake up and write down what you're going to do and like make your coffee thoughtfully. He's like, wake, if you need coffee right away, wake up, make your coffee, sit down, write your list. What do you need to do today? Like, what do you want to accomplish today? What's your attitude for the day? Then you take your shower and you focus and take your nice shower and you enjoy your shower. (laughs) And then you like, and she sent me a text in the afternoon and said, thank you so much. Told David, thank you so much because... I started my day so great today and so focused and did my little... And then she, she, I guess he told me that she like woke up and she was like, I came to get the coffee and he was in the same time. She's like, but we're out of coffee. Oh. <laughs> it's like, so now what? Yeah, she was like, this is my first like, step and it's not working. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. It was really cute. I swear there is nothing better than having crisp comfortable bedding. I know. I think with that also too, it's knowing that your bedding is environmentally and socially responsibly sourced Mm -hmm. and is something that is at the, um, a pillar for Altera Pure, which is one of our favorite sponsors. Our favorites. Yeah. I mean, comfortable too, because it's not going to affect our skin. Like sometimes Mm -hmm. if I've had, you know, kind of cheap bedding, I don't know where it comes from or how it's made. I've had skin reactions and Altera Pure um, is one that we trust. And um, 
we just love it so much. They are sustainable. They are committed to fair, fair trade with their partners. And, you know, they've been in the textile industry for a long time, so they know what to look for um, and they don't take any shortcuts. They're super transparent about their process, how things are made. So you can literally call them up and ask them questions and they will keep no secrets and tell you what you need to know. So you can try Altera Pure by going to alterapure.com, A-L-T-E-R-R-A pure.com. Use the code almost 30 for 15% off anything and you'll get free shipping on orders over $75. So we love them so much, alterapure.com. My favorite on-the-go snack pre-workout snack and dessert snack. Checks all the boxes, tons of protein, lots of fiber, ethically sourced, real ingredients, nothing scary, skinny dipped almonds, people. So insanely delicious. I cannot say it enough. Our community is freaking out. I see them tag skinny dipped all the time. They're our almost 30 nation is doing meetups around the world and they've been sharing skinny dipped. It's so so sweet. But Skinny Dipped is a brand that we believe in, uh, that we trust, and it's delicious. They have dark chocolate peanut butter, dark chocolate espresso, dark chocolate cocoa, dark chocolate raspberry. They're delicious, nutritious, and really unique. Crunchy crunch, but not too, too sweet. Sometimes when nuts are covered in stuff, it's too thick and it over overtakes the nut. And Skinny Dip does it right. If you haven't listened to our interview with the founders of Skinny Dip, please check it out. They are incredible. These four women created this brand, super inspiring. But you can try Skinny Dip at skinnydipped.com, S K I N N Y dipped.com. Use our code almost 30 for 20% off. That's right, almost 30 for 20% off your order at skinnydipped.com. how are you managing like because like seeing all this like stuff happen with your family too and then having to run a business like I don't the Revolve people are so normal they're such nice family oriented people like Michael Mente's mom and I loved each other oh so you know when my dad died they were like we got everything's fine here like take your time like no problem, you know? And so I don't know. I just, my, I like cry in my car a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's like, I have that moment. I've always, my car has always been like a safe space for crying. It, um, it, is. it is. It's nice. And, but I just, you know, I'll be like, I just like, I just like miss my dad, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm so happy that I'm like in his home and that this wasn't sold. And my mom's not like in a shitty tiny apartment somewhere. So that was like, we just right away, it was like, okay, so we can either like pay for her to have an apartment that's like tiny somewhere and me go to sleep at night knowing my mom's in a tiny fucking apartment. Ugh. And and those are the kinds of behavior, those are the kinds of situations that can like lead to like early onset dementia and things like that too. I did, and my grandmother had all, her mom had Alzheimer's and that was just really heartbreaking for all of us. And so I was like, she needs to be stimulated a lot and She's going to get into weird habits. Like my mom like doesn't eat that much. And she has like, you know, because she doesn't eat that much. And when she has her evening wine, she gets like a little buzz mm-hmm. going and it's cute. But I'm like, what if she, I don't, you she know, I just was like, like, what that. if she falls? Yeah. My mom is so tiny and brittle. Yeah. And so it, it was, David didn't even think twice about it. He was like, yeah, let's move it. And the, the, you know, the price to pay for this place would be what we would pay for two apartments. So that just made total sense. It was just, I feel like we joke, the common the conversation we have constantly is just like, I just want to fuck my husband. Like, <laughs> and my mom, <laughs> really? and my mom, like, even last night, she was like, she's like, you can fuck now. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to bed. And I was like, that doesn't make us want to have sex. Like, <laughs> she's always like, I can't hear anything upstairs. Like, your dad and I used to have sex all the time. And I was like, I know. And yeah. like, I don't <laughs> <laughs> need to know that I'm also happy for you guys. It's yeah. like, that's a weird feeling where I'm like, yeah, mom, like, I'm just like, I railed my dad. Yeah. <laughs> like, good for you. Cause she'll like tell a little, it's like, one time the oh, alarm went off and like we didn't hear it because, you know, we were busy. And 
the police came and like I just had to like run and put clothes on so quick, you know, because we were and I was like, oh, <laughs> you're, like, you're getting we were busy. <laughs> But that's an open conversation. I mean, yeah. I think that has it always been like that. No, oh, yeah, or mm-hmm. yeah. Well, not like, but, but you know, my parents got when they got married. The, my dad bought this house for s- s- pennies a long time ago. This mm-hmm. wasn't this part of Pasadena wasn't like as nice as not. Nice, yeah, you know. So he lived down the street with his ex wife. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and then he really liked the neighborhood, so they. Um, but they, like down the street, this is a long street. Yeah, yeah. He lived down there, and I think he also knew that he wanted his kids to be because they had three kids, and so they were divorced for however many years or whatever. My um, mom worked for my dad, which mm. is really cute. She was the secretary, mm. and he was like, "I'm in love with you," and she was like, "I don't feel that way about you." And so he was like, "Okay, well, just you can work here until you find another job." And then like she kind of like couldn't find another job, and mm-hmm. he kept being like. Still love you. <laughs> so that as I was saying, that chair that's in the living room was the chair that he was like, I love you. Like so nervously. He was like, I love you. And she was like, I don't. And so as soon as they started dating, mm-hmm. he was so stoked because he had loved her for so long that he was like, I bought a house. <laughs> she, no. What? And so they bought, she bought this house. He bought this house for like nothing. And there was no upstairs. And there was a tie. The kitchen was so, so, so tiny. And we all lived in here mm-hmm. and then they you know added on the upstairs for themselves because my mom had a kid and my dad had three and then they had me so there was like a lot so that's also why this house is so important because mm-hmm. energetically I don't know if you like feel it when you walk it it was crazy when you walked in because there's so much going on right now but like like my assistant the first time he came here cried when he walked in because mm-hmm. he was just like I kept telling Lindsay I'm like I'm a nervous because there's so not nervous but I just know how much energy there is here so imagine like yeah. this, ha- having that many kids here and then this was the house to come to. So like, oh, my brother and his friend, like they're almost fi- in their 50s and they are here all the time. And like my brother's best friend, Paul, like when my dad died, when we had the party here afterwards, like Paul was a wreck. And he still, you know, if they park here to go down to the Rose Bowl. For- <laughs> Bobby, did you want to come say hi? <laughs> You want to come? <laughs> yeah. Tell us what you're cooking. Yeah. <laughs> what did he say? I'm keeping it quiet as much as I could. You. <laughs> um, he parked here for the UCLA games at the Rose Bowl, and he has a really hard time in here without my dad here. You know. Mm. So, and will tell us the funniest stories. So be like, he told Javi Day that he used to come over, and when they were in college, they went to USC, and he would take a six pack and leave a 20 because they wouldn't have beer. So they'd come back, whatever. My dad would just collect the 20. He never said anything. And finally, like years later, Paul was like, why would you never get mad at me for taking the beer? My dad was like, a six pack is 12 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I've made money off of you for years. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? So there's oh just God. everyone has those kinds of stories. Yeah. And then I have nieces and nephews who are here all the time. Oh. Like, I you know, their parents are divorced. And so when they come home, they're like, and so they're just like, I just want to stay here. Yeah. So there's always like, and then my mom's side of the family, like her cousins, like, and now my best friend and her husband live around the street and they have a, my goddaughter. So like, I'll get home and they'll just be here. She's yeah. like, Gray will just be on the couch eating butter sandwiches. She makes crackers with butter and she like, knows how to work our TV. And Goals. Like, that must help you to disconnect, you know, like that must help yeah. you to like c- create a clear or at yeah, least... Yeah, you know why? Because I ba- don't boundary. have a bad day and go to fucking like Chateau Marmont. Yeah, man. You know what I, I mean? mean? Where like I talk about other gossipy things Yo. and fill my brain with like, this is what's going on. And oh my God, look who's over there. Like, so-and-so's over there. Yeah. I come home to where like, like my bo- where my bad mood doesn't matter because yep. I'm not the only person who lives here and like... My husband had to give up fucking everything to be with me. And like, it was like over starting a brand on our dining room table with like no money for an office and like hustling to get money to like get his samples made for Mm -hmm. his like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like we are like trying to really just get it together over here. Mm -hmm. Did you guys always like express so like loving, like there's such beauty in like your life and like, you know, all the tragedy that has also happened, but it's also like, seems like it just allows for such open expression for how much you love. Yeah. Like, we've always, always been that been way. Like, like, always. The day my dad died, we were, he was in this 
we had dinner in this room. I sat on his lap and like, just like kissed his beard and played with his beard and stuff. We've always been like a very, I love you, I love you, I love you. Where are you mm-hmm. going? Are you going to your doctor's appointment? Do you have your insurance Crew card? Neck. <laughs> Do you have your insurance card? He looks like he's in like a Tom Cruise in the I know. 80s right He now. does. <laughs> he needs some aviators. He has them. He's making us My dinner. brother's in the Navy and he get, we went to see him get promoted and we went to the Navy store like on mm-hmm. the Naval base where the Navy sweatpants are $12. And Sexy. Spe- we got, he got, he almost he bought, he tried to buy a uniform to wear. And I was like, you're not in the fucking Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Disrespectful. <laughs> Disrespectful. I was like, you can't just wear the Navy. He's like, the uniforms are over there. And I was like, but you didn't, that's not. Okay, is that a costume? I was like, you make sweaters. <laughs> so you boy about all the Navy I want to talk, tell our audience like what he's gone through, like what, a little bit about your love story. And like, mm-hmm. I know it, but like, I would love yeah. for you to like share. He DM'd me on Instagram. Did not have a very active Instagram. He's not like an Instagram person at all. He doesn't like it. Yeah, he like DM'd me and I didn't answer because I was like, what am I going to do with this like suit guy? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, totally. I was like streetwear and skateboarding. Yeah, honestly. You know what I mean? And then he messaged me and I didn't respond and he kind of like, kept saying a few things and then he you know he was like you're beautiful you're beautiful and then finally he said and complicated I, I guess you said I was beautiful you said I look interesting sorry <laughs> which I was like also like oh yeah, it's you're more right. cool to say interesting yeah you're, you're oh, right that's so true yeah, and then he called me complicated. And I oh, was like, so that I was the blank. hook. That was the hook. That was the hook. And then I, and you I kind of like it. a little bit of a, a little bit of a dig. It's a dig, yes, yes. And so I was like, oh, excuse me, I'm not complicated. What does that mean? <laughs> I said, so I just wrote back, like, explain. And then he was like, hook, line, and sinker, got her now. <sighs> and then he was like, I'm too big. He's like, I'm not really like a text person. Like, here's my number, call me, but like, I'll be working until nine. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, so okay, I guess I have to <laughs> weird I was like I'm not gonna like call you and then I didn't and then he was like and then I finally was just like listen if you want to call me like fine go ahead and call me whatever and I was in um, Austin for Aaron Watson's birthday so I was like shoveling margaritas and was like drunk enough to entertain the conversation because you're like with friends you're like let's see what this guy I was like oh, yeah. and Aaron like doesn't have Instagram on her phone and she was like She's so not an internet person. She was like, babe, get off the web. Like, we're in Austin. <laughs> like, this is like, you're with the best people, babe. Get like, off the we're web. going to this art gallery. <laughs> like, having tacos made by this, like, 80-year-old woman. Like, I was like, but I was like, this guy on the internet's hot. Like, <laughs> I mean, we ended up talking and then we FaceTimed uh, for, like, a couple of months and then he was able to kind of, like, wiggle a quick trip into me. It was like, he landed at like midnight on a Friday and was mm-hmm. took the first flight on a Sunday. So it was a short enough period where if it was like weird, it would be like, see you later. Yes. But I like loved him so much right away. And then we would date and then we would break up because he was like, I can't do this. Like he was working so hard for this promotion mm-hmm. that was going to be in Italy. And he was like, you're obviously never going to leave. And I, he also was like, you're so not for me. Like, you're, yeah. He was like, you overshare and <laughs> like yo <laughs> then you're hearing this podcast he's like I need to get the fuck out of here <laughs> he was just like I'm really private Damn. he's very like she, and that's when the company worked for before like those people don't even have like you're not really allowed to have Instagram you don't mm. it's like you're just a silence mm. yeah you know and so he was just like that's not for me and he was trying really hard to just really stay focused on his career path but I was like but I love you and so he mm-hmm. gave me some of the worst heartbreaks I've ever had because he would like, he'd be like, I can't do this anymore and like dump me. And I'd be like, you're supposed to be with me. So then we'd have moments where we weren't together. <laughs> How did you, you know, know we that, would, like, by the way? Yeah. Other people. I, Good one. You know, I had had relationship. I had had three long relationships before that. I didn't start dating until I was 18. I first, but I had like, you know, a year and yeah. a, another year one and then like a two year one and with good space in between because I just always was like really happy being alone and being free and being like, I'm Carrie Bradshaw. I can do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, so. I was living in New York. And, but I never had had that feeling that was guttural. That was like, I am like, I would lay in bed with him and in my body, it was 
so clear, like, I have to marry this person. Like, I have to have a kid with... And he would be so mean to me to get me to leave him alone. And I was like, no. Like, there's just no... I just... Like, I know that we're eventually <laughs> going to be together. Giving all crazy girls permission. Yeah. Well, that at least. No, but I don't... No, I'm serious. But, I'm serious. Yeah, that's yeah. an interesting, like... Well, he wasn't ready. Mm, were, he was yeah. not ready. Why do you think he wasn't ready? Because he literally was... Had his building living, his Also, kingdom. his life at that time was waking up at six, hopping in... Getting his espresso, hopping in the shower, getting on the fucking shitty ass train from Brooklyn to go to Midtown in his like beautiful 45 piece suit in his like leather bag. And he would work his ass off until 9 p.m. every night and Mm -hmm. on weekends. And like he missed a flight one time or it got canceled. He didn't miss it. It got canceled. He was supposed to be in Texas for work. And the flight got canceled. And instead, every, so everyone else was like, okay, well, we're going home. There's a snowstorm in New York. He rented a car and drove to Buffalo to take the 6 a.m. flight out. So he drove through wow. the night wow. to get to be at work on time. That's how focused he was at work. And that actually was an interesting, we were like fully kind of like, weren't really like officially back together. And I think that there was like a couple moments in our relationship where we both were like, oh, fuck, this is like unavoidable. Um, and I stayed on the phone with him that entire six hour drive because he was driving through a snowstorm and I didn't want him to die mm. or fall asleep. Mm. And so we just like told, like, I was like, what were you like when you were 12? Like, what, was it like when you lost your virginity? Like, who was your first girlfriend? Like, he just told me, I, like, he just, and he tells stories in such a way that's like so charming, you know? So I was just mm. like, ah. and I stayed up, you know, really late to like go through that with him. Mm. So there was just a lot of, and then, and then finally, when it was last September, not even a year ago. Oh, well, a more little, than a year a ago. Over a year. Sorry, a little mm-hmm. over a year ago. That would have been, I wonder what weekend that would have been. That was like our, I went to New York with the dog um, to film something for Sax. And he was really weird when I got, I was like landed on the red eye and I was like, and I, he, I didn't really hear from him. And I was like, fine, I'll just go stay with someone else. Like, and he was like, if you're in New York, you're staying with me. Like, but he was like such a dick. And we like weren't getting along. And like, so he got home from work late. And I was like in the apartment. I'm friends with his roommate. So we were hanging out. And he was like kind of weird and really excited to see the dog. And like, Clyde wouldn't even look me in the eye. And then he was like, this is too much for me. Like, I really miss you when you're gone. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. it takes me time to recover. And, you know, we talk all the time, and then we don't talk, and then we like see other people, and then we're talking. And he's like, I, and he was never really that vulnerable with me before. He was like, this is a lot for me. And, and I obviously was not going to move to New York. And I obviously was like, I don't want to move to Italy. And so I said, you know what? And I was devastated, but I was said, let's just have one last weekend together and just stop talking and mm-hmm. never talk again because as long as we're talking mm-hmm. we will do this thing and yeah. so let's have a blowout awesome great last weekend and say goodbye like and he was like okay and pff, that lasted 48 hours and then we were in a bathtub looking at each other like all right well tell me all the bad things you've done the last years when times we were broken up because we need to know everything that's going on because like we're never going to be apart like we were just like we got to do this so let's get all the bad stuff out of the way in this one conversation and then talk about how we're going to move forward Mm -hmm. and promise each other that we'll do everything to be together from now on and that was September and then he proposed to me in December and then he got that promotion he was working his ass off for and it was to move to Italy in a really small town and I said my dad is like sicker than usual. And I don't know. At first I was like, dude, I'm moving to Italy. Mm -hmm. This is great. Mm -hmm. This is like the money he always wanted. He would have gotten like a house and a car. Like you're able to have babies. He would have been able to be like our provider. But I was like, first of all, doing that without my family around, I'm going to have kids alone in a country with that. I don't Mm -hmm. speak the language, but also great. I'll have really well-traveled cool kids. You know, I was Mm -hmm. like so back and forth. But then I had a gut feeling that said, don't leave. I had a gut feeling that I've had a gut feeling about a couple of things that like I should have said no to that I didn't, that went bad. And this, and so I'm happy that I listened to that one Mm -hmm. because I, um, I was like, I can't do it. And he tried to get the company to, because they have some offices here. And he was like, can I move there? And they were like, no, you've been 
we rearranged everything to have you come here. Mm-hmm. Wow. And his like whole world crumbled and he was like, okay, I will like, he's like, I'm not going to have a job, but whatever. <laughs> and so he packed out, he rented a Suburban and packed it up because it would fill all of his stuff. And that was cheaper than, that was the cheapest way to get here. And he literally got here in two days, which normally takes like three without stopping. I mean, it's normal. Yeah, he left on a Thursday and got here on a Sunday or a Friday. I think Friday. I got here. It was, he's, all he did was drive and then he slept in the car twice for six hours. Mm. And he was just like, and what do you all- think was the switch? Uh, yeah. Like, just like the turning point. I know you had that weekend. Like, was yeah. there just like, he, what he yeah. said to me, what he said to, he's also, he was this, he was so in love with my dad. And my dad was like, just come here. We got you. We'll figure it out, you know? And so, but what he kept saying was, I can find another job. I can't find another wife, Mm. which was really sweet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he was on the phone with my dad when he crossed the California border. And my dad was like, welcome home, son. Mm -hmm. Which was so cute. And then two weeks later, my dad dropped dead after we were with him all day long. So, and he literally dropped dead. And we, Davide went up and held him and was like, I love you. I love you. He's like, I'll take care of them. I'll take care of them. He's trying very hard to be strong, but he legally cannot work and has not had a job for that. He went from working that much to not working at all. So that's also on top of all the other stuff that goes on. Like that doesn't matter because he sits at that dining room table every morning, like trying his fucking, and there are days where he's like, Oh, this is happening and everything's happening. This is great. And there are days where like, he will call his mom and his mom's like, can you come here? is like, she doesn't understand. And then he'll have like a day where he's like working, but then like, you know, is like done with the stuff he needs to do. And he's like, I don't have anything else to do. And I'll get home and he will be like sitting in in like the dark in the dining room, like very depressed. And it's awful. And I'm like, you did this, like you gave up everything for me. And so I have so much guilt. I'm just like, oh my God. I promise I'm going to give us like really beautiful kids and it'll be nice. And this is just, like the beginning and we'll look back on this. I just the thing keep being like, we'll look back on this. We'll look back on this and then it yeah. won't be like this. That's the constant. So yeah, I can't really be... Like when I have meltdowns about internet stuff, he's so like, the fact that you give this more than a second is like, makes me look at you differently. Like he's like, how the fuck is this a thing? Like, who cares, you know? And I'll be like, no, you don't understand. He's like, it's what? Like, he's just like, I don't even want to hear. Mm-hmm. It. Totally. You know? Mm-hmm. So it just comes down to really just simple, like, Italian principles, which is like, that. Per- uh, and they'll be like, well, I don't, well, that person, I, that person follows them. So then he's like, then fuck that person. Like, then that's not your friend. And that's a blessing to find out that someone's not your friend who you thought was your friend before. You know, it's like those kinds of, he's like, well, I don't, like, there's no, I'll be like, but this, and he's like, okay. And does that serve your life? Or I'm like, no, he fucking cares. Yeah, literally. Like, thank you. For anyone going through, you know, the grieving process or losing someone, like, what would you say to them? I don't know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know. I I was like, part of me is like, am I going to just hit a wall? I mean, I sit here alone a lot and I'm fine. But I also, my dad was sick off and on for a long time. And he would got very grumpy and very hard to be around and very needy and would like snap at my mom, you know, and he was just freaking out. And so it was hard. Because there'd be nights where he would be like so awesome and he would stay down here till like one in the morning. We'd like smoke cigars with him and he'd, and then, but most of the time he was in, I mean, my dad was like in the, in bed a lot and my mom was showering him and dressing him. And so I didn't, pissed that he won't be here for my wedding, but I know that it's a conscious choice that it was a subconscious choice that he wanted to die before because he wasn't going to be like the man that he wanted to be at my wedding. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I talked to a lot. I know it sounds weird, but I talked to a Mm -hmm. lot of psychics. And and so I talked to him a lot. Yeah. I really, I like, I talked to him a lot. It's awesome. It's like really cool. Well, from what you've described, you know, his spirit is so big. You know, I can he was imagine. such a fucking cool guy. My speech at his funeral was so awesome and came through me that morning. So my mom 
fucking filmed it, which is so crazy. She secretly filmed it on his phone, which is like so weird. She had his phone with him. But, you know, I was just like, Chuck, I like stood up in my church where I was baptized with him. I was like, Chuck was a fucking legend. Like, he called a guy I went on a date with once, a pussy for ordering his steak. Well done. <laughs> and I <laughs> and I wasn't, and I, I, I didn't, I say the word in church, obviously, but I was like, you called him a name I couldn't, I can't repeat here, but a normal daughter would have been like, oh my God, it's so embarrassing. I'm never going to mm-hmm. hear from him again. And I was like, looked at my dad and I was like, you're right. We were at a very nice steakhouse. <laughs> 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 This is like we splurged on this meal and you yeah, literally ordered the steak. This is well all my allowance. Done? <laughs> no. My mom dropped me off for this a shit. Prime it's such cut. a good point. You know, my dad was just like, oh, you're an athlete and you're eating a well that like, oh, no. <laughs> like we had like that kind of relationship. He was just cool. He was a cool dude. So I also, I just have like a great family, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like we'll all hang out all the time and we're good. Like, so I don't know. It's it's been an interesting year, but it's also been one that's been like really good. And I'm like, I honestly at this point too really feel like I have a lot of like cool projects that are in the work, like outside of LP that I'm just like, all right, we gotta keep like grinding this out and like moving forward. And yeah, I wanna open up like a home goods store in Pasadena and shut up. Yeah, like, you know, we really I wanna like expand into other categories. Your ear one shit's fire. Oh, well, my drink. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I got it the other day and I think that Did they, um, fuck it up? they fucked it up and it was so <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this isn't me. Yeah. <laughs> this, so, like, you're like, who's this pee a bitch? And I was like <laughs> talking to the owner of Air One. Like she was standing next to me and I was like, I have to introduce myself. I'm Pia. This is my drink. <laughs> like you might be familiar. Really I, want, I want to shoot her in LPA. I'd never met her before and she's so cool. And I was like, thank uh-huh. like, And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to take my drink into the car. Like, Love this drink I made. So, <laughs> so good to see you. Happy we're on the same page. Health and wellness. Like, and I get in the car and I take a sip and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh it was God. so bitter. It was clearly too much matcha. Like, and that's so easy to mess up. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like one totally. extra teaspoon and it goes from Tell delicious and milky. Drink, yeah, what's I in the drink, honey? Well, so up. this is so this is what I do every day is I do a different source of some of a different kind of caffeine mm-hmm. or not sometimes if I'm trying not to do caffeine and I activate it and then I do different things add in different things that I think I need because so my um bees honey Vanessa She's who I work best. with I love Vanessa told and I should obviously just know this and everyone should know this the same thing every day it's just not good for you your body gets used to it and it doesn't serve its purpose anymore so I used to be have a coffee, have a bulletproof coffee every day, and then one day I was like, "Oh, I bet I could do this with matcha instead." And like, what would that taste like? And so it's basically, I make like a little top, a little activated topper every morning. So I do bo- hot water, not boiling, because that can kill the. So I do warm water, either ghee or coconut butter, and MCT or or coconut oil and MCT mm-hmm. oil. Mm-hmm. That's like my little fatty base. And then I'll either add in... Well, I had to stop having tocos because they're from rice and I don't do well with rice, mm. which sucks. Do you have like a collagen in it? So I always a collagen yeah. mm-hmm. and from different brands, but I love the Vital Proteins Vanilla Collagen. So, that shit is fucking it's fire. fire. It's fire. Um, so I do that. And then I whatever, like I'll either do like a moon juice, like a the brain dust is also mm-hmm. fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's in the matcha and air one. Or I'll do like a power dust. Or like sometimes I'm like, I feel fine right now. And like, I don't need to have that extra thing because I'm such like an uppers person and I don't want to get, then I go into like frantic sound. Or I'll add, sometimes I'll add like hemp seeds because when you like mix them in, when you blend them in, they become like milky. Hmm. What oh, and then matcha, right? Yeah. Or, or And I do ashwagandha a lot because mm-hmm. that's like a year round. That you can have year round. That's really good for your body. And then muc- mucina purins. Oh, what's that? I don't know what it's it is. It's another adaptogen. Like, okay. yeah. So these are like, I know the moon juice shit is expensive, but you can also just get the sun potion and they last forever. forever. And uh, they're tiny serving. So, you had another one um, mm-hmm. in your closet, like another type of adaptogen powders. It, it oh, a lion's mane is really good too. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I love Lion's Mane. I'll Reishi, throw Lion's Mane, I'll throw Chaga, all of those like, are really good too. So I just switch them up. Yeah. And I mix, I blend that until it's frothy and that becomes like milky and delicious. Oh, and then vanilla stevia because it hides any bitterness yeah. from anything. I do um, monk fruit. I love pa- monk fruit. Mm-hmm. now. So good. And it's, I like the taste of better than the stevia. Zero glycemic index yep. too, which mm-hmm. is so great. So then I put that either on top of a yerba mate, a matcha, a coffee. And that's like so... Or... What I've been doing is I put that in with um, just like turmeric and cardamom and ginger just to have like a delicious, mm, yummy thing yeah. that doesn't have any caffeine in it. I try to have ginger and turmeric. I'm I'm really like food is medicine. and But I also like, I love to like shovel some bad food. You know, I have French fries. I drink a lot of alcohol, mm-hmm. but I also make sure that I drink as much water as I drink alcohol. And I, I do hot yoga every day. So I like sweat that shit out. And I do, I was like really serious about not talking about this on a public platform because it's gross, but I, <laughs> the coffee enemas like at home once a week. Well, how like, do you do that at home? So you literally just get a, you just buy the enema kit, which is like super chill on Amazon yeah. and you elevate it and then you like get down on the ground and you stick it in <laughs> and you, and there's a little clip on it to hold it. So I pour it in and then I release it and Fills up. Fills me up. Uh-huh. And I do three minutes on my back, three minutes on either side. Sometimes I can't hold it for that long. Yeah. Okay. Um, Violent. And that is a liver cleanse. Good one. That is mm-hmm. like a very intense liver cleanse. I also um, have to... This is not something that you should just do at home without being consulted by like multiple people doing a lot of research on mm-hmm. it. But it's something that has been a part of my process now that really serves me. And has given me energy in a way that is not like frantic, anxiety inducing energy. Like it's, I'm, I'm so calm and focused. It's really been like amazing wow. and really helped with my like overall digestion too, because I do have really bad digestion, but it's crazy. I mean, that shit is like, I like was joking with Vanessa the other day. I was like, it's like two o'clock and like part of me is like, should I have an espresso or should I just like go home and do a coffee at a And she was like, I did the same Thing. The other day, she's like, she works out of her house. She's like, I just was like, I need 20 minutes. <laughs> oh my God, to blast this out. It's really Do you easy. have a parasite? Yeah, I'm working on getting that. Thing I think out. I have yeah. one too. I, I'm, I go to India's mm. or Vanessa's girl, India. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. Lucky. She's amazing. Dude, she's amazing. Yeah, I'm you 10. You gone to her? No. I'm 10 days on, 10 days off of what's that stuff? Mm-hmm. Uh, Chiro, yeah. stop chewing right next to us. <laughs> He's like, huh? Look, look at this bone I have, everybody. Yeah. Isn't that so pretty? <laughs> yes, I know. Oh, the, the, um, fuck. I can't remember. Parasite. But, um, yeah, I have a parasite. I'm How did you find out? Vanessa found it. Mm-hmm. Just did muscle testing. I used, yeah, I don't, I did a parasite cleanse once with a girlfriend that worked with me, which was like so vulgar. And like, it's about like killing all the parasites and like shitting them out. And yeah. that was like. And then if you have to wait and kill the babies. Yeah, or something like, like that. It's just like, I was yeah. like, I don't even want to do that again. Like, do I have to put your butthole in milk? What? <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, just kidding. We're not talking about sex. <laughs> uh, no, just kidding. So, one time I listened to this podcast and she had a really bad parasite and she had to sit in milk. So, the parasite came out. Yeah. So, it was attracted to the sugar in milk. So and the I parasites think, seeped out of her So there's like hole. different kinds, right? There's like the kinds that you get in like other countries that are actually like yes. giant worms that yeah. are in your intestine. Which she's saying there's like a little itty bitty micro one that's moving its way around my body and this is how I kill it. So okay. how satisfying I'm here for you. would that be? I'm here for you, honey. But, yeah, it's almost like I wish a worm would come out your butt. I know, because yeah, I would be, be like, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> India, was, <laughs> India was like, oh, well, I see the little so shit. Small, you can't, I see uh, the parasite. They, oh, you, it's like fish shit. Mm-hmm. And I'm uh, like, that's fucking disgusting. It's crazy when things start working and you're like, I feel fucking good. Yeah, yeah that man. was me last week. Because, yeah. you know, everyone always... And listen, so I have to be the same thing like, like my friend uh, GP said. Like you do have to be very <laughs> careful about information that you share with people because it is very isolating. Mm-hmm. And, um, and a lot of people are like, is that, you know, someone was like, don't you think all this is snake oil? And I said, listen, if what? it's not drugs or alcohol or something that's obviously like negative and it's making me feel good, I don't give a fuck if that shit is placebo because I feel great. Yeah. And like, I had a colonic a couple of weeks ago where I'd gotten so much stuff already out of my system that 
it was such a beneficial colonic. Mm. And I got in my car and turned on, like, I don't, I like turned on a happy song and like sang on my way to mm. work. And I was like, I feel incredible. Mm-hmm. It's like a fresh start. It was like, I For just, life. bad stuff was out of my body. Mm-hmm. And I just was in a good, and so obviously, as you know, like depression, anxiety, all of that, it starts from your fucking gut. And mm-hmm. I had years yes. where I was depressed and on so many pills and I had years on Adderall and, yeah, you know, I had two doctors tell me I was like months away from diabetes. And I had two doctors that told mm-hmm. me I was bipolar too. And so I was medicated for being bipolar for a long time. And none of that made me happy. Mm-hmm. It made me fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. And so I just was like, I'm getting off all of this. And so uh, this is like what serves me and makes yeah. me feel really good. Um, I'm not like I still go out to dinner and like, I still do like, you know, my bad girl stuff and drink wine and take shots and like smoke American spirits. Yeah, occasionally. <laughs> like so that I will not be doing in the new year anymore. But no like, cigs? No. No cigs. Pete. But I, you know, a couple you. a couple times a month, I like to have a night where I just rip bad. Rip a couple American yeah. spirits and it it's like it's also hard we go to Italy is fucking everyone's like totally. chews cigarettes. I mean, nothing that operates here applies to them at all. Daphne's like, and all his family members are like healthy besides poor mama and like older and they eat fucking pasta three times a day and they have bread for breakfast with their cream cream and ice cream. <laughs> like, <Right>. and, <laughs> and everyone is happy and then you yeah. just kind of, you know, it's the just happiness very, thing. The food. But even that was so funny because when I asked what else Paul that question and she was like, she's like, in Italy, they, and I was like, my husband's from Sicily. We have this conversation all the time. <laughs> like, he doesn't, like, I was an asshole the other day. I asked someone if they had natural wine and Dominic went, oh, good, natural wine. And I was, <laughs> and I looked at him and I was like, I don't want a wine that's made in Santa Barbara because that shit is full of fucking, this is pesticide sulfate juice. And so mm-hmm. I will get Hungover. Yeah, fuck. natural wine is like normal wine for you. That's, so I'm just asking for like what's normal for that's you. That's just normal for yeah. you. Like, even in Whole Foods today, because I was buying stuff for the LPA dinner tonight and and I was like looking in the natural wine section and Davide was like, well, I want Italian wine. And the Whole Foods guy was there. And the Whole Foods guy and I were like, well, oh, I was like, this should say natural above all the Italian wine mm-hmm. section because that's just as natural because you don't use pesticides there. Anything, mm-hmm. you know? So... I've been doing that too, actually. When I was in Australia too, I was just everywhere ordering organic wine, ordering mm-hmm. natural wine. And it's interesting. Have you noticed how good you feel? Uh, it's so much better. I felt like a champ the next day. Champ. And I'm confused of... It, like for some places, it's the hard. Sulfate. Like a lot of places, it was hard for them to find one. Yeah, which is so weird. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. You I know? also feel like the... It's, it's actually full of anti. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. if I'm drinking a bottle, it's fucking sugar. But like, you know, that actually has antioxidants. Yeah, mm-hmm. those are all that's when they say like a glass of wine a night is good and dark chocolate. Well, you can't have fucking sugar or dark. You can't have dark chocolate that's not lilies. You need to or can only really have like lilies dark chocolate or whatever is like mm-hmm. sweetened with monk fruit or honey or whatever. There's Lakanto. Lakanto. Lakanto makes like a chocolate with sweet with monk it's fruit. It's so, so good. good. I eat um, the whole bar. It's honey not makes healthy. me break out like a psycho. Honey, so I, I can't, can't have... too much the sugar. Yeah, it's mm. crazy. I can't have that. But yeah, like I feel so good having a glass of... And there's like, bot, like there's even so many wine stores I go to. I have a bottle of it here. There's like this one wine. It's like so... It's like double the size of a regular bottle of wine. And it's from Italy mm-hmm. and it's natural. And it's... 18 fucking dollars. And wow. that thing will last, you know, last me a while. Totally. And I'm like, oh, I feel yummy drinking this and I don't mind drinking <laughs> totally. that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have that or tequila. The red wine is making my lower stomach really chunky. I can you're you're ridiculous. Please. Well, you, you know, look, when you, you look hold amazing. that like... Yes, honey. Women. I do women. know. It's a women thing and I don't mind. Life. I think it's sexy, but I can tell when I'm drinking a lot of red wine and I'm like... I mean, listen, I'm like... I used to be, when I was growing up, my weight fluctuated from like a 12 to a six. Like it's crazy. So I was listening to someone there and now people are like, you're thin and you don't can't fucking say anything about anything. And I'm like, well, I know what it's like to go to buy a prom dress with my best friend who was a size two and them not have any dresses for my size being like a 12, 14. Like they just didn't. I remember like we would go to like ABS in Old Town and they were like, didn't have anything that fit me. And I, yeah. every time we would go shopping together, I would cry. Every time. And I was like, there's nothing... Actual torture. Here for me, you know? And those girls were eating fucking 
pizza. Of course they were. Yeah. Cookie dough. But they... 16-year-old bodies. I got my period when I was 10. I stopped growing when I was like... I mean, I looked like I was 25 when I was like 12 years old. It was crazy. So I had like, boot the whole thing. So, and I didn't... I never played a sport. I wrote for the paper and ran the video production department Mm -hmm. at my school. I was Mm -hmm. like ASB student activities director. Like I did that shit. So those girls didn't have their period. They were growing like fucking trees and ran all day long at their practice Mm -hmm. or whatever sport. Yeah. Chiro (laughs) Baranchini. Enough. Uh, He wants the attention. (laughs) I know. He wants the attention. He smells so bad right now. He go get back. No, he looks great. Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos, all commission-free. While other brokerages charge you up to $10 for every trade, Robinhood doesn't charge any commission fees, so you can trade stocks and keep all your profits. Plus, there is no account minimum deposit needed to get started, so you can start investing at any level. The simple, intuitive design of Robinhood makes investing easy for newcomers and experts alike. View easy-to-understand charts and market data and place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. You can also view stock collections, such as 100 Most Popular. And with Robinhood, you can learn how to invest in the market as you build your portfolio. Discover new stocks, track your favorite companies, and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. Robinhood is giving our listeners a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help you build your portfolio. So you can sign up at almost30.robinhood.com. Again, that's almost30.robinhood.com. I was thinking the other day, I cannot wait to make my kids drink Four Sigmatic. (laughs) Isn't that a weird thought? But kind of (laughs) true. All right, y'all. You've heard it from us so many times because it's true and we are diehard fans of Four Sigmatic. Their adaptogenic mushroom blends are the best of the best. They are so delicious. They offer coffee mixes, superfood blends, elixirs. They even have new beauty products. Check it out. Foursigmatic.com slash almost 30 will bring you to our landing page. And it has some of our favorite products listed just for your reference. And I actually just bought the mushroom starter kit, which is mm, some of my favorites the mushroom coffee mix, the mushroom hot cacao mix, and the mushroom matcha mix, which is so, so good. Um, It's on sale now, just FYI. But their products are of the highest quality. You can trust them. And I just love what Four Sigmatic is all about. They're not opposed to taking risks and really doing things different. This brand is the raddest. We've had Tara, the founder, on our podcast a couple times. Check out those episodes. In the meantime, go to foursigmatic.com slash almost 30. Use the code almost 30 at checkout for 15% off. So that's foursigmatic.com slash almost 30. Code almost 30 for 15% off. What are you excited about for next year? Can you have a party or something too so we can come besides tonight's party? Because I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're going to come. Uh, I know LPA started out so hot with so many sick ass fucking parties. And then it, it was like, oh, I need to have another. Party. No, we don't even party, but we just need to come over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm here all the time. Okay. This is like an open door for food, and Dominic oh, will make whip up a pasta anytime. Perfect. Okay. We'll um, keep the girl talk to a men. <laughs> I'm excited next year for uh, within, like, I really feel like LPA, we've hit such an awesome stride and like the product like we like are fitting all of our product for like May and June right now of next year and like I'm just like every time the fit model comes out in her dress mm-hmm. I'm like oh I can't wait to wear it. where before uh, I would be like okay well that's so far from the original idea and like there was too many opinions on it and I don't think the print goes mm-hmm. well with that silhouette and then like the buyers want this but like I want this and then it's like got watered down right. and I wasn't really diligent and uh, you know, when you have so much pressure on you to do something, you just like question yourself and it's not like a, and now also like I'm 
Davide dies all the time. Like he dresses so chic and sophisticated. And he's like, why do your tits have to be out all the time? Like you're my fucking wife. And like, I don't want you going around. It's like your fucking tits out. You know, like why do my wife have to have her boobs out all the time? <laughs> That's what I always said. So I've also, you know, as I'm getting older too, like when I go out, like obviously like I want to wear, like I went out and head to toilet PA the other night and I was like, I'm a fucking fabulous fucking bitch but also on a tuesday i want to put on like a really chic poplin thing that's like baggy with a tie around it so i can cinch my waist if i want to or not i also oddly am like buying things and i'm like oh this will look good when i'm pregnant which Mm -hmm. is like really funny so there are pieces that are coming that are like way simple and good staple things that you could have for a long time and that aren't like this is a trend now and so Mm -hmm. i'm making this and and I obviously have to do that because that's what people want regardless of... I mean, people can talk shit all day long and be like, this is a, all these brands are just trends and this is something you wear once and whatever. And I'm like, well, you all buy it. And like everyone who talks shit, like it's like those are the same people that are buying, 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 mm-hmm. buying, buying. So this is also like a business. And so it's those cheesy, trendy, slutty things sell so much. I remember that from when I worked at Reformation. Like the things that were like really scandalous would sell out in a second. And so women just really want to feel sexy. But I also think that there are times where you really just do also want like a nice silky button down. So we have like a lot of those coming, just like cool, more stable things. And like we have sunglasses coming, which I'm excited about. And like the shoes are really fucking cute. And so... If you want to dress us for tour. Truly. I will. I will. I will. Because I'm, ha- I'm really happy about all this stuff that's happening there. And I do think just being more product focused instead of being like, oh, I need to do this event and this activation. I'm more so like, we don't need to activate all the time. Like just for LPA, like, you know, and I'm so thankful that Revolve does all their stuff and the LPA is included. And, but like, I used to want to do all the, I used to think that like LPA specifically had to like throw the best party every week. And like, I was like, we should do a monthly after hours party. And then I was like, no, like, I just think we really just need to focus on the product being fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then I want to like venture into like home good stuff with like people that live in past. I really want to sell like there's a woman who has like a 10 generation ceramic business in Sicily and she runs with her husband. Her husband has a bad back. He can't be there every day. So she runs this huge fucking wow. ceramic lot with her mom in a wheelchair and her husband who can't be there. And we like, I went and bought some stuff from her last time we were there and she was like, I'm exhausted. And so I was like, I'm going to sell all your shit in America like, and make you rich. (laughs) Legit. So I want to do all of... I want to have like a wall of that stuff and like linens and, you know, just... And Davide is launching his brand. I'm so excited for that. So cashmere stuff. I want to make like cashmere blankets for your couch and um, like, you know, staple investment pieces. sweaters are beautiful. Beautiful. And they're so light. When is that launching? He's like in going to meet with his... I don't want to talk to him. Okay, yeah, yeah. He's going yeah. to meet with his people Great. in February. So I want people to know that it's yeah. coming. Once yeah, it's like ready, I will be like, ah. And his okay, campaign cool. for that is like... He's just very... It's been watching him grow into himself and mm. like seeing... Amore. Hey. Stop. He's this dog. <laughs> <laughs> Love him. Um, like in what... You know, because he was so prim and proper before. And so now he's like so California cool and like his style is like so fucking incredible. I'm like, God, you really combined this lifestyle. And he like, he gets along with like a 70 year old man really well. Am I like my brother? And then he gets along. So like his campaign is going to be like real people wearing this. So he's doing like my brother and his son and like my best friend, Hillary's dad, Mm. who I hang out with all the time. I drink wine with the, oh my God, I get more drunk in Pasadena with my friend's parents than I <laughs> did in New York. It's wild. Like, till 2, 3 in the morning just sitting in front of the fireplace what? talking shit, drinking fucking Prisoner. <laughs> prisoner! <laughs> till like, the end of time. That's like when every, every like wealthy dad has got a fucking bottle of Prisoner. <laughs> of course. You know what I mean? Um, so, uh, I'm excited for all that stuff and I will, if, you know, 2019 is going to be If my yeah, body uh, permits me, I will hopefully be pregnant. I cannot wait. I don't like to act like, well, I'll be pregnant next year. I know. Mm-hmm. I always say I, that too. I'm like, if I'm lucky enough. Yeah, I don't know. I will have a healthy who, baby. What will happen? And um, I have a gut feeling that my baby's coming, which is nice. And I know that my first child oh. is my soulmate. And so I've been waiting for him or her for a long time and I feel mm-hmm. them around me. So I know that that little spirit is excited to like hop into a body. Totally. 
Um, have you had a psychic tell you that? I've had every psychic. I tell have me too. That. They always tell me that. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited. Me too. I think it'll be a boy. Or it'll be a little monster girl who's gonna Yeah, but I was like, mine's a girl, or she's gonna be it's gonna be like a very feminine man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have like we talk about Is names it, all the time he wants such an italian name he was like what should, he's like i like the name beatrice and i was like <laughs> and i was like but that, well that's beatrice and he was like no but it's beatrice and i was like but we're in america dude so like <laughs> you can't name the kid something that's like super dante i'm like dante he's like no it's dante and i'm like but dante. no one's gonna go dante <laughs> <laughs> but he's very concerned about losing like his italian mm, heritage rude. like he's really really like i don't want my kid to like all of a sudden forget you know but we'll spend every summer yeah. there it's like yeah, we'll spend every summer there. Our kid will be on a Vespa making mm. out with girls when he's 14. Maybe. I want to do all that stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, I really am excited about having a kid. Like really, all my friends have kids. I'm happy they all did it before me so I can see. But I'm really excited about seeing my husband with our child. Uh, I mean, bye. Yeah, I know. I am too. I know, and we such have a good such mom. bad baby fever and it's cute. And I'll- I actually am starting to get it. I've been it's- at the airport and I was like kind of freaking myself out. Isn't that funny? Yeah, I was like, why am I looking at everyone's baby? We <laughs> were just at Whole Foods and I look over and he's talking to a little girl. He's going, ciao, ciao. <laughs> and I heard him say, I was like, oh my God, he's like, we're so cute. Repeat. He looked at the at the mom and he's like, my wife and I, we have baby fever. <laughs> 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 like, you like the way he says American things. <laughs> like, I was like, oh. Uh, baby fever. <laughs> we have, yeah, we got we, the, baby we have the baby fever. Oh, that makes me he so happy. He says things wrong that are so... Instead of saying, I was like, we need things like no GMOs, no GMOs. And he was like, so he said OMG by accident. So he was like, is this an OMG chicken? <laughs> you know, oh my God, I wish she was here. What um, last question. What, um, Love you. what are you taking away from this year? Like what feels like something, you know, either just a message or I don't know, just a feeling from this year that you want to bring into the next year. God, I don't. That's a hard question. Can you just? Sorry, Chero just climbed up on us. <laughs> Hi, pup. Hey, puppy. You I should... think just getting really tuned in with intuition and gut mm-hmm. feeling. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. So in the one. in like the work that I do. Oh, you smell so bad, honey. <laughs> in the work that I do, my like personal practice of things that I do, like. I've had like the woman that I work with tell me, stop, Gigi, get off. I've had the woman that I work with tell me like, you're too busy. <laughs> you're too busy that you're not, like people are sending you messages and you're not listening. My life. Yeah. You know, so even like, even when my, after my dad died, I was like, you know, like he's like come to a couple, he's come to a couple other people, but not me. But I just feel like, you know, and she was like, he's around, he's giving you signs all the time. You're just not open to it. So I know. I feel like it's really hard to be a woman. I feel like, okay, this is the best time to be a woman, but we, but we all now went so hard that like, I see, I hear conversations with girls being like, well, I'm not 30 under 30 and like, I don't have a fortune 500 company and I don't, and I'm behind. And so I feel like there's pressure now to like have a gazillion followers on Instagram uh, of, of really fucking Awesome soul center awesome business. Awesome company that's like so cute and funny and charming and like so disruptive to the industry. And you need to be skinny and pretty and work out and show your workout videos. And you have to have the best skincare routine. And you have to like, and like, yeah. And those are things that I fucking do, of course. But like, you know, I, I don't want young girls to think that having a, a, like that they need to start a fucking company and like yeah. do all those things is what makes you successful at all. And so I think that that's where like coming back to like, yeah, like gut feeling. Because mm-hmm. it's like also okay to like live in a small town with like the man that you love and like have a job that like, you know, a lot. I think it's, I think it's healthy to have a job where you go to work and you do your job and you come home and you don't think about your job. Dude. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, people don't, Thank that's you for not saying something that, that people yeah. are like, I need to do all these things, yep. you know? And it's like, I think maybe if the chic thing is to not do so many things. And I will eventually get mm-hmm. to that point. I'm not in a place financially where I can do that. 
So, but the goal is to eventually yeah. set shit up so I can just be like a really good mom when my kids are in elementary school and like be able to sit and do homework with them and take care of my mom really well and be able to take care of Davide's family with his business and like let him really like, I want to support his business a lot Mm -hmm. or do one together. You know, I, Mm. you know, I, I think that like, I do really think that like following because you because it happens on all levels. It happens with friendship. Like I have girls reach out to me all the time that are like, I've, I've been working on myself and like I'm losing some friends and I'm like, then those aren't your friends. And so I would rather be alone than be surrounded by a lot of people that don't yeah. like me. You know, I think that there's just a lot of, there's just so much pressure to be so many different things mm-hmm. and I don't want to contribute to that. Um, so, I but I also, I'm like, I gotta get my hustle on. It's an interesting. Yeah. I don't think you, I think you are, you are doing exactly what you're saying. Thank you. It's you hard. It very well. I'm obviously such like a, Brene Brown vulnerability queen, but it is my vulnerability that and me letting everybody in that also uh, attracts a lot of people being like, you don't need fuck you. Really? Really? Oh my God. I think it is the most magnetic thing about you. No, I did not take my eyes off you I, when I'm with it you. Is because it, I, you. It makes people hate me. And it's because and they want to be like that. I, I don't know what anybody wants to be like, but I think that it's, I'm giving them so many things to hate on because there's so much information there that it's like, so it's hard because it's like, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm I, like, why? So nobody's mad at people who like only post bathing suit photos yeah. and those, you know what I mean? I I'm was actually feel like too. I'm sharing like the fake things. ass people that are like, and hey good guys, for, good for them. And good for them too. Like peace and blessings that are like, well, hey no, guys. I wouldn't, I don't want to say just bathing suit photos, but I mean, people who never talk about anything yeah. and are just like, here I am doing this and here I am doing that. Like, I feel like those are also like, those are such like young girl. I mean, I don't know anyone like that, but I just things that I just like see on the explore page randomly where I'm just like, wow, like yeah. that girl never heard of her because I'm just older and out of touch. But like this girl's like five million followers, but it's like, <laughs> what's her voice? And like, you don't know what her voice sounds like or like what her thoughts about anything are. And I'm like, what is this person? And it's like, she, so that, but I'm also like, good for you. Like get that uh, yeah. hustle. But I, I don't, Gabrielle Reese said something so smart. Her podcast with on Goop is Jeez. her interview is unbelievable. Mm. And she said that she was talking to her daughter who was like 14 or something. Mm. She was like, I don't, she goes, I'm older. And so I don't know what advice I'm supposed to give to my child because I didn't have Instagram growing up. So mm-hmm. I don't know how to navigate mm-hmm. around that because I have one that's obviously really specific to me or whatever. But she's like, yeah, I'm telling my daughter, like, be truthful and be a strong person and share your, you know, things that are like really meaningful to you. And she's like, so I, so we look at Instagram, right? So I'm telling her to do that. And, and that's normally like the 10K to 100,000K follower range. But then she sees girls that have 5 million followers who are posting photos that are like more provocative than I would want her to post. And it's mostly just that. So she's like, I don't know how to tell my daughter what people are interested in when when you look at Instagram and it's like, well, this gets you really popular and this gets you mm-hmm. way less popular. And so that that is something that I'm interested to see actually too next year. Like what? I don't know. The, inter- the yeah. internet's really interesting. I'm interested to see where it is. It's also like yeah. who's following that 5 million follow. You know what I mean? Like the type of people and then maybe the one that has less has a more like intentional I don't yeah, know I just I think about like, I don't know because who's following these 18 year olds who are you know, pervs <laughs> but I'm also like happy for those girls that like they can make money at that young age too I like nothing that they are like nothing is wrong but right. I think as like a mom when you're telling your you daughter this is what people value yeah. That's hard because it's yeah. just visually well, you can't argue that Completely. It's people, you know what I mean? So it's just, I don't know. I think like, I think like the, the, I also don't want to be, uh, I do, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I could do a lot of little things. I could very much do a lot of shit to get a lot of fucking followers. It's not hard. Yeah. Once you're, but I just don't want that many people following me. Mm. I already feel a little like. Exposed. Exposed. It's hard. I feel like I'm like really, but I'm also then very thankful because I feel so connected to the people that I talk to on Instagram. Like, Mm -hmm. I feel like I have like a community of women Mm -hmm. 
all over the world that are so, and it gives me so much faith. And then when bad internet things happen, I go like, I said it a couple of weeks ago. I was like, I, like I also, it's also a big reminder that there are a lot of very, very, very sad people mm-hmm. that are pissed and sad. And so, you know, it makes me feel sad because, you know, we're human. So anyone else's pain is my pain. So that stuff makes me very sad all the time. So I don't know. It's weird. It's a, I wish I could fucking delete it, but I got to work. I know, <laughs> man. That's I can't even like, I don't, yeah, I can't. And, but I also, and then I like being connected to other people. So, you know, there's like faith that I, moments in there. I don't know. The whole thing is like such a mind fuck, you know? Yeah. <sighs> just beauty. And then it's just like humanity, I guess. But it's like you just got to stay into the good stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Julia Roberts, Oprah, Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> I love you. You're like, oh, it's so nice. Gwyneth Paltrow said, you should be yourself. And I thought that was profound. <laughs> like everything she said, you're like, she said this awesome thing. Like, drink what? more water. And I, I thought that was amazing. Drink water. And I thought that was beautiful. No, she was so, had no, she was like, I fuck up at work all the time and I'm like really bad at interviewing people and I don't know what I'm doing and like people buy goop. Like, I don't know. Like she was very like, oh. Yeah. She cool. was like, my daughter's obsessed with Doritos. Like she was like oh so cool. God. Um, yeah. Um, (laughs) hearing her on uh, the last thing her being interviewed by Oprah really changed my perspective of her so I encourage anyone to listen to that because I thought that was Gwyneth was on Oprah's? Uh huh Oh I didn't catch that one and it was um, she was talking and Oprah was talking about how she loved Gwyneth because um, she is the person that brings like things in the health and wellness space to light like although it seems like at first it's out of touch and it's not very approachable her bringing that starts the conversation that can then eventually bring yeah. it to the masses. She's the one that's going to... I mean, Gabrielle Reese said it on her podcast. Gabrielle Reese was like, uh, bone broth and eat organic. Like, fuck you. That's been happening since mm. the... She's like, every culture in the world has broth. Mm. Like, that's how, like, Koreans have fish broth. Mm. Like, they've been doing... Every culture has had yeah. broth. You've taken the bones from the animal that you ate and you've put it with water and you fucking drank that shit when you ran out of meat. And that's what kept people alive and kept you functioning. Like, these are all things that are just goddamn obvious. But there are certain people that have to, like, explain that and share it. And she's going to get the brunt of it for a while. Like, Amanda Bacon, like, once they, once there's scientific proof that, like, adaptogens are medicine or more of it and becomes, like, more then you know... It won't be yeah. weird. Yeah, but completely. in the meantime, a lot of these people are going to get a lot of sex dust real art. Yeah. <laughs> we what had do? sex on sex dust once. Oh, and my like husband doesn't take drugs ever. He's never done any drugs. And he was like, I feel so <laughs> different. And I was like, you feel like you're on Molly. <laughs> no. And I was like, really? Because I, I, yeah. And I, and I was like, that's, you feel like, well, wom, really? Wom, wom. Whoa. Yeah, okay, I got like, warm, yeah. fuzzy feeling. Not that I've ever done Molly once when I was 18. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you for making we the love time. You. We love you so I'm much. I'm happy that you guys came. Oh my God. This is my house. Dream. Me like, too. Saw my timing. mom and my husband and I. I feel them. so grateful. Like, I just feel like so lucky. I'm like, I'm at Pia's house. It's a really funny. I walked through the house naked yesterday because I like took off my. <laughs> And like my laundry and like my mom and my husband. <laughs> and Devin is like, excuse me, like go put some clothes on. And I was like, they're in here and I just need to get them. And my mom's laughing and like, he's like, it's weird. It's like, you're naked and it's hot, but your mom's here. And like, I don't know. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. This yeah. needs a reality show. For you. True. You do, I was 100%. just about to say, would you say yes to one? Kind of. Yeah. Like you would. Like, I feel like if it would be done, if like I if edited it, it on YouTube, if it's done well, it would be beautiful. I it would think be it beautiful. would be an incredible series. Yeah, if it was series. done well, I would yeah. absolutely do it. Okay, it would happen, but I don't think you should take it. You need to pare down. Yeah, that'd be day. You need to do less. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I can't be all Ooh, up then. in here running through the house naked with a film. <laughs> Literally. All right. Oh, we, all right love we love you. you. Love you. We'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Love it. Well, well, love her so much. So much. Love you, Gail. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening to Almost 30 Podcast. It means so much that you guys are here. If you are not a member of our secret Facebook group, please join. And then we also have subgroups in all the cities. 
There's about 40 subgroups right now. Um, so you can meet up with women that are like-minded, that are all about personal growth development, supporting other women in cities by joining some of the ambassador groups that we have. Yes. And stay tuned, almost30podcast.com. We will be updating you on our tour schedule for the year. We are continuing our domestic tour and going international as well and also planning a college tour. So if you are in a city that we are going to, or if you are in college and want us to come to your college and have connections there, please reach out to us, events at almost30podcast.com. Quick review of the week. Five stars. Love. This is from Kathleen. This Mm -hmm. podcast has given me so much support and helped me along my journey to accept and love myself. Each episode has opened up my mind more and helped me realize what truly matters in life. Thank you, Kathleen. Thanks, girl. So good. Thanks, guys, for listening. We will see you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.